What's up, guys and girls? Welcome back to another Live at 3 in what will still be my studio or our studio for a little bit longer. They have released the beast on uh, building out the new one. I know I keep teasing y'all about that, but you're just going to freak when you see this new building. It's just, just something else. All right. Since I, I haven't been cleared to show you any of that, I can't really, can't really do that yet, but I will. I will. Who knows? Maybe we'll do a live walk around. That'd take more than 30 minutes, though. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go. Well, let's start off by our giveaway. We're still, we're almost through taking entries for the giveaway of that Kimpex ATV throne, if you will. I believe it ends at midnight tonight, but there's still time to go over to partzilla.com, enter to win. And you can use code John9123 for additional hundred bonus entries. So get over over there and do that before you run out of time. And as always, let's swing around and look at any questions that either I couldn't get to last week, although I think I did. Um, I got everybody and these were sent in via either Facebook Messenger or YouTube, not YouTube, but uh, maybe Instagram. And uh, I read through them really quick and there were some pretty intense ones, but let's go ahead and go through it. See if I can give my best stab at each one. <clears throat> Just Ride 39 and asked me, hey, John, hope you can point me in the right direction. My Can-Am X3 charging system no longer charges my battery. I've changed the regulator and stator twice. That's the definition of insanity. Originally, I had, ah, here we go. Originally, I had the leads reversed trying to charge the battery and that fried the battery. I bet. Can the flywheel be the issue? Is there a way to test the flywheel? Uh, no, it's not going to be your flywheel because basically the, your flywheel just has magnets in there and that's what generates the, uh, the, the current by uh, passing that through a field. What you've probably done is either A, blow one of the fuses back in that console. It's actually on the, on the right, that center console. But if all the fuses look good and, and you don't see any of the breakers that have been tripped, uh, I think they're resettable, by the way. I believe that model, if memory serves, has a couple of what they call fusible links. And those are a little tricky to find because, hell, they just look like another wire. But you'll have a wire going into this funny looking wire that's usually a little bit uh, larger in diameter, kind of squishy feeling, and then another wire on the attach of it, on the, on the other end of it. And that's what they call a fusible link. Now, why in the world they some play, uh, some manufacturers use this? I'm not quite sure. Maybe they uh, figured out late in the game. Oops, we need to put a fuse in line on this particular wire. Oh, I know. Uh, let's put a link in there. <laughs> Sounds like poor poor engineering on somebody's part. But hey, if you know better than me, I'd love to hear the answer why any manufacturer uses uh, fusible links. But at any rate, that's what I would look for on your particular machine. Wish I could be more specific as to its location, but it's been about four years since I've uh, worked on the electrical system of a uh, a Maverick. So it's been a little while, but I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. Kenneth Morgan had uh, sent in a question. I have a 2008 gr um, 700 Grizzly. When I started up at cold, it has a little thumping sound in or around the clutch drive belt case. When I, it will stop when I throttle it or after it warms up for a few, for a few minutes. Not really bad, but when I throttle it, you can hear it just wondering if it could be stretched, the belt could be stretched a little and maybe slapping on the case. It doesn't really sound normal. What you're describing is probably the weights and they're just little round hoops that are inside of the, uh, the drive clutch and they more or less ride in a bed of grease and over time, all your different deposits, and maybe you've got some water in there, it starts to turn that grease into you know, plaster. And when it's cold, those weights just get thrown thrown around because the grease hasn't really heated up and uh, to, well, become grease again. So it sounds like what's happening to yours. Now, we did a video that shows you how to repack the, uh, the Grizzly 700 um, primary clutch. So if you would take a look at that, I'll walk you through it. It's a messy job, but you'll be amazed how much smoother your clutch will engage once you get all that crud cleaned out of there and uh, pack it with the correct amount of Grizzly Ultramatic Grease, if memory serves. Mm. 
Mr. Willie one. How are you doing, John? I, I, I'm doing well. I have a question. I have a K5 GSXR 1000 with ignition problems. I overhauled the fuel fuel pump. All right. Well, that's not really part of the ignition. I over, I overhauled the fuel pump, replaced the rectifier, the starter relay, and the fuel pump relay test. Good. Anyway, when I turn the ignition switch, no pump primes, the headlights don't turn on, and the 12 volts that go to the fuel pump is going to the negative and not the yellow and red wire. Okay. I haven't done any wiring or work on the bike. Could it be the ECU? What you're describing there is kind of a system-wide failure. If you're telling me that you're reading 12 volts on the negative wire that should that's going to your uh, fuel pump, that leads me to believe that that ground is not grounded. So in other words, you've got your battery, it's going through a circuit, and then if that wire is just hanging there and not able to go to ground, yeah, you can read 12 volts right there if this is your device you know, in the middle, which in your case is a, uh, a motor, but same would apply if it was a, a light bulb or whatever. But yeah, you can read um, 12 volts on the quote, quote, negative wire because it's not grounded to anything. Otherwise, it would have completed the circuit and the motor will be doing something. So I, it sounds to me like you've got a ground issue. I, I don't remember exactly where the uh, there's a cluster ground. <sighs> Can't answer right now. There's a cluster ground or a couple of them um, at or near the... Uh, the, the battery. Go back there and make sure that that connection is tight. It's going to be there are like four or five different ground wires that come in together. There's going to be a 10 millimeter uh, head bolt that goes through there and grounds into the frame. That I bet you is not doing what it's supposed to do. So because it's, there's several circuits evidently that are not able to complete their way uh, or to complete. So take a look at that and see if that straightens it out. All right, JK Gaming 2004. Hey, I have a 2007 Raptor 700, and on deceleration, sometimes it has a loud backfire. What could be the reason for this? Also, the rear, okay. Also, the rear sprocket bolts keep coming loose. I even put red, uh, red thread locker on the bolts and let it sit for two days, and still no luck keeping it tight. Any input would help. All right, on the deceleration, if you haven't changed anything on your machine, when I say changed anything. If you haven't uh, you know, changed your air filter or pulled the air filter cover housing off or changed the exhaust and it's just starting to backfire, well, something else is going on. Uh, more than likely, check your junction on the, ex on the exhaust header. There's a slip joint. And if that starts to get loose, it's going to let air in and that'll actually uh, allow it to pop inside the, uh, the, the, the exhaust, unburnt fuel inside of the exhaust. If it hits the right ratio, pow, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fire. So that may be what's happening to yours. So I know it's an odd thing, but check your exhaust and see, and see if that slip joint is loosened up. All right, Gerard Robinson. Hey, guys, looking for a bit of advice. I have a 1982 XJ750 Maxim Yamaha, and it will not idle without choke. We know where this is going, don't we, kids? <laughs> Um, I also seem to be having a drop off in power at higher RPMs. Okay. I started by replacing the vacuum petcock. Good. Cleaned out the carb jets. Did you though? Then I replaced the valve stem seals and checked the piston rings, which are okay. Nothing seems to improve how it runs. Any theories? I mean, it sounds like you were circling around it when you started to clean out the, uh, the carburetor, but it sounds to me like it wasn't fully cleaned out. Just because you clean out the jets doesn't really mean that everything's fine on the other side of that jet. There's still passageways on the inside of that carburetor that if they're stopped up, having that jet cleaned out, well, that's just not really going to accomplish anything. So I think the majority of your problem lies in the uh, carburetor itself. I would suggest putting it in an ultrasonic once you break it down and then trying to blow it out again and then see what happens. Um, as to everything else you did, whew, I think I would have spent a little bit more time on that carburetor first, but hey, we are where we are. All right, the coal miner. I have an 04 YFZ450 that's been bored out, cams, valves, and aftermarket heads. Should I worry about pre-ignition if I run 87 or I need to run higher octane? 
Oh, good gosh, man. Yes. If even a stock um, 450 wants you to run 93 octane in there. So especially everything you just rattled off, you may even have to put uh, 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 VP race fuel in there, depending on what your compression ratio is. So, yes. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to destroy all that work that you just did. Whew. All right. There's one more. Richard Huey, I have an 07 GSXR 600. I've changed out the ignition switch. The bike turns on. I don't hear the fuel priming. Uh, it cranks. It just stays cranking, but won't fully stay on and idle. Some weird buzzing sound I hear instead of the instead of the sound of the fuel pump priming. Could someone give me advice on what that could possibly be? Wow, a buzzing sound. Sounds like we're having an electrical issue somewhere. Richard, uh, you gave me a fair amount of uh, um, information, but uh, it, not quite enough for me to pull this off. And I wonder if that buzzing sound is your fuel, your fuel pump trying to, uh, to, uh, to prime. If you're watching this right now, if you could do a recording of that and get it to us through one of our um, social media channels, uh, I can take a listen to it. But uh, without hearing it, right, there's not much I can do from from uh, from where I'm sitting right now. But hey, I will be glad to take a listen to it. So if you'll send that in to Hank's attention, I'll take a listen. All right, guys, that catches that catches us up. Let's see what we have for this week. All right, we're not that busy today. That's all right. That means I can go home early. <laughs> Paul Gravinsky, how's it going, Paul? Happy Friday, John. So now all kinds of input needed to see if I'm wasting my time. I have no uh, idea of the year yet. So I have been going through Yamaha Big Bear ATVs with a, with a four by four. Took me a few hours just to get the horrible carb off without smelling so bad that my mom will yell at me again. <laughs> Hopefully, I figure between 80, 89 and 91, 89 and 91 model, too soon to tell uh, that if I can find the numbers. Well, let me uh, let me know what all you find in there. I'll be interested to uh, to help you out on this one. Like I said, it's, you're not that far away, so come on in and uh, we can uh, we can work on it. Hank, this is odd. Only one question sent in. That never happens. Never. Or uh, is the stream still doing what it's supposed to? I guess y'all would tell me if it weren't on uh, on Skype. Or if they're going to let me off that easy. Hey, so be it. I will. Uh... Okay, there you are. I was beginning to wonder. <laughs> Oh, and Paul came back. I wonder if you can tell us just how many entries the winner had to put in to win the throne. I, I won't know that yet, but next week, I bet you I could, well, of course, we haven't counted them up yet, but uh, I bet you I can twist Chelsea's arm and we can find out what the total number was. Chelsea, are you going to let me do that? Are you watching today? For you director of dragons? <laughs> All right, Christopher Miller. Hey, John, update on the 2015 Razor 900 EPS that I had the, CP, the crankshaft position sensor code and wouldn't start after rebuild. So the camshafts were, oh. so the camshafts were switched around, uh, causing the timing to be all fixed that, and it fired right up. Well done, sir. Well done. You're not the first person that's ever happened to, and I didn't think about that because, yep, it is uh, it's an easy mistake to make if you don't count those two lobes versus the single one in between the exhaust on the intake. Well, I'm just glad no damage was done. So well done, Chris. Well done. All right. Paul came back stock in the grow the gloves. Also, I used to clean off to clean off all that trash out there and a few uh, with a few toothbrushes. Came out awesome, if I can say that. Well, sure you can. Why not? Honda CBR. Hello. Happy Friday. I have a question about the Honda CBR engine. Crankshaft alloys and their colors. Does each number have its own color? Yes, it should. 
somebody asked me last week about the uh, the crankshaft codes on a, a particular model, and Hank, I don't remember them in ever sending in their uh, their information to where I could uh, do the the mental gymnastics to tell them which cut which uh, which parts to order. But yes, each one will have its own code. Uh, Paul said, "Let me know how to send you photos on this nightmare on Gov Street. The harness is horrible." Isn't that fun dealing with a 20 or 30 year old harness? Yeah, Paul, you can get in touch with us um, like you've done before. Um, just send them in that way. I'd, li I'd like to see this. I can share it with the rest of the class. How's that? T Nicholas 94 came across you because I thought my uh, 08 R6 needed a, a head gasket. Been parts ever since. Been buying parts ever since. Well, good. Glad to have you as. Part of our little uh, our little team, and uh, anything we can help you with, you just let us know. Dwayne Sturgeon, love what you do here. Keep it up. Well, I will do my best as long as my body holds together. Sound like a deal? We can do that. Homegrown to off road. Hello, Polaris Sportsman XP HL. Doing top end. Do you have a toolkit? And what is 0.05 millimeters over stock? Well, I would have to bring up a little bit more information than that, than that. but uh, do they make an oversized piston for it? They should, if I'm thinking of the correct um, make and model of the XP. What's the, 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 the displacement on that one? And we can guide you to the correct part. And although it's pretty easy, just go to Partzilla, your make and model, and it's going to give you the, uh, the stock piston size and the part number. And then in the, if they're available, any oversized as well as the rings. It's good to take a peek. But if not, if, if not, you just drop it in the chat and I'll, I'll help you walk through it. How's that? Michael Taylor, Taylor. Hello, John. Been missing you. Uh, just getting back to my 08 FJR. I still need to flush the fuel system. Did you get a chance to make a video? Really appreciate your time and effort. Well, I wish we could turn and burn that fast, but uh, I haven't been able to we haven't even bought an FJR yet, but that's one of the ones that I do want to do. I've got more work to do on this one. We are, we being Tracy and I are in the middle of doing a series on the, uh, an 08 Raider. Love that machine. I had a uh, VTX way back when, and I actually, I like the, uh, the Raider even, even more. But hey, we'll get over to that FJR eventually. Uh, we'll put it on our, our list of machines to get. Always wanted one in the corral anyway, because I have to go test it every so often to keep the battery charged, you know? <laughs> Philly D, John, this is an update on the O2 GSXR. I bled the brakes as you suggested due to the brake pedal going to the floor again and uh, doing uh, going to the floor again. Keep up the great work. Not a problem. I'm glad it worked out for you. That, Technique has uh, served me well over and over again. All right, Michael Taylor, testing. What are we testing, Michael? Oh, oh, um, flush the system. Oh, did you get a chance to make a video? No, but we will, but we will. All right, guys, I caught up with y'all today. Well, I'm betting uh, most people are out there playing with their toys with us. Fantastic weather we're having. That's what I may have to go do tomorrow. Speaking of that uh, Raider, I think it needs to be taken out for a road test. What do y'all think? <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up and call it a day. And as I said at the beginning, y'all head over to partzilla.com. It's on the opening page. Enter to win that Kimpex ATV throne. Doesn't cost you anything to enter to win. Use John, uh, bonus code John9123 for an additional 100 entries. All right, guys. Everybody have a great weekend, a great week. And God willing, we will see you. Oh, wait a minute. I haven't even told my team this. Uh, I will not be here next Friday because I will be on my way to my nephew's wedding. He's getting married down in Florida and uh, he'll like this in typical tally fashion. He will be leaving on his honeymoon on one of uh, one of the family boats. Pretty cool stuff. All right. 
once again, everybody have a great week, a great weekend, and we will see you not next Friday, but the one after at three o'clock. Y'all take care.